welcome to today's session. Today we will be discussing some key questions which are relevant to the discussion on intellectual property rights and the rights and responsibilities regarding intellectual property rights. In the earlier sessions, we have discussed about intellectual property rights, the different types of intellectual properties and for which we have patents, maybe copyrights, we have discussed about trade secrets also and uh, many other aspects related to it. In this session, we are going to take up some detailed issues uh, which may be in the other sessions we could not discuss in details. So, we, in this session we are going to focus on some critical questions with related to intellectual property rights and we are going to again focus on some cases and we will try to see in each of those cases what are the intellectual properties involved and what are the rights and responsibilities with regard to it. So, let us see what are the key questions that we are going to discuss in this module. So, the first key question that we will be discussing here is how broadly should one share ideas? How read readily one should copy the ideas of others? Does it matter what the ideas are? or the human wants or needs that those ideas help meet. This will be our focus of discussion for key question number 1. In key question 2, we are going to discuss what are the some creations that are accorded copyright protection. Under what if any circumstances is it fair to copy a copyrighted work without explicit permission. In key question 3, we are going to discuss about how does one know what knowledge or information is proprietary, what considerations are relevant in deciding how a computer professional or an engineer can best keep confidential the proprietary knowledge of a client or employer. In key question 4, we are going to discuss on what is the difference between having a proper property right such as a patent or copyright for something one has invented or written and credit for having written or invented it. In 5, we are going to discuss like on the one hand there is non invented here attitude which disregards the advances made outside one's own organization. So, the other hand there is a legal specifications of copyright and patents and other intellectual protections are intended to limit the use that others can make of one's design. So, if there is a like restrictions on um, both sides, then what are the best and prudent means from learning from others? Because we understand we can grow only when like we can like disseminate our knowledge and also we share our knowledge and also we have we can learn from others. So, what are other ethical issues that may arise in? learning from the invention of others. So, these will be the main key questions which will be covered um, in this section. So, you understand like you can understand like this in this module we are going to take up some uh, critical questions and do a detailed discussions of those critical questions where you find that you have to reflectively think of the issues and um, go for the may be pros and cons analysis through all the pillars of like ethical decision making that you have and then come to a best possible solution for the problem at hand. So, we will begin with a key question 1. So, which is how broadly one should share ideas, how readily 
one should copy the ideas of others, does it matter what the ideas are or the human wants and needs that those ideas help to meet? What we find over here is like it has been long argued like the research intellectual labor which is involved in a designing for a research artistic or um, any technological work the intellectual labor which is involved in the creation of these things provides a basis for property rights because we have invested our energy because we have invested our knowledge and expertise on the subject and the, the in creation of the research and artistic work. So, then it that is where we can claim like it is our property and from there and that like from that sense of like working for it like investing our time and energy and knowledge into it a sense of entitlement or right develops. So, if the mm, producer or, or the creator is mm, who has developed these things are paid for producing the product, then we can argue like the product and any resulting trademarks, patents, copyrights or other property rights uh, belong to the employer or the client who paid them because you have worked for um, others and um, you have you have been paid for your work and you have produced as per the demands of the others or specification given by others so we can tell like the you can argue that for the any trademark patent or copyright so or other property rights belongs to the employer or the client but still um, this the creators still have deserved the credit as the authors or inventors of those patented or copyrighted creations. So, even we can understand there are two different layers over here even if the patent or the copyright we can argue it belongs to the person who has paid for it, but still the inventor or the author deserve the due credit as the author or the inventor who has like as a creator of that product. So, like we can argue over here again we can like uh, debate over here is um, like if a surgeon um, who has developed a technique uh, to save lives, but keeps the technique as a trade secret to enhance his or her prestige. So, should we um, tell like um, withholding the um, technique is wrong uh, or like would it be wrong for another surgeon to try to like um, learn about the techniques like eavesdrop into it, electronic eavesdropping or asking an operating room assistant. So, what we find over here if you go to the in depth of the discussion of this issue which has been stated over here, the duty of the surgeon is to save life of mankind that is the profession for which the surgeon has uh, like um, that is the oath that the surgeon has taken. Now, wait um, it may be so that uh, she has um, developed a particular uh, technique that saves life. So, and keeping it as a trade secret to enhance her prestige we may tell like this is not something which is a virtuous nature of the uh, person because if I respect my profession and if I uh, respect the uh, my duty to the uh, mankind 
which is like my duty is to save life and mm, if I have genuinely developed a particular technique which is uh, saving life for people, then this knowledge needs to be shared so that you know like others can get benefit of it. So, instead of withholding this technique as a trade secret to enhance one prestige and maybe to charge more money for these things, this knowledge this surgeon could, could very well share it to the community to the to their same professional community through like research papers published and um, trying so in those cases um, share as a, she could claim the authorship of these things and um, share it with others but reserving something which is directly connected to the life saving of the person is not something which 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 you can tell like this is justified if it would have been uh, something like uh, maybe it is uh, uh, like um, you, you are uh, developing some cola or you are cooking something and there are certain ingredients that you uh, don't want to like share it with others and you want to keep it as a trade secret maybe uh, it is different but when it is something which is linked with your saving the life of people and the intensity is so high the impact of your action is so high like it can save life for people then maybe we it may not be very ethical for the um, uh, surgeon to reserve this knowledge to herself as a trade secret, but she can very well spread that knowledge claiming authorship of the uh, paper or the you know, developer uh, of a particular technique. So, so that you can others can also gain advantage of it and that is how the field develops. Coming to the second surgeon who like would it be wrong for the surgeon to try to learn the technique by say electronic eavesdropping or asking an operating room assistant. So, it is it's nothing wrong in learning from someone, but the means taken for learning like electronic like electronic eavesdropping or asking an operating room assistant may be bribing that odd person also. Uh, to get that knowledge is something which is not ethical. If we find like the first surgeon has reserved something as the trade secret and also the second surgeon is trying to learn about that technique, um, he or she can always maybe write to that person, uh, try to assist that person but taking a like different route in the kinds of electronic weaves dropping or asking the operating room assistant to uh, share that knowledge the means taken for learning here is not something which is justified. So, if you tell like who is wrong maybe both of them are wrong to some extent in the way that they have perceived the problem or the the way that they have executed their action. So, um, regarding this like in the case of surgeons, so we need to follow some guides, codes and what we find over here like ethics codes and guidelines of engineering professional societies also provide some um, guidance regarding it. So, um, the section of the NSP's code of ethics on intellectual property addresses more than proprietary interest and gives standards for fairly crediting others as well. So, um, it like outlines the following as professional obligations 
engineers shall whenever possible name the person or persons who may be individually responsible for designs, inventions, writings or other accomplishments. So, the case that we discussed in the earlier case may be the question. So, this is again a matter of trust, trustworthiness, respecting others contribution and like intention to share the knowledge like if the first person if, if the first surgeon in this case if she is afraid like my intellectual property is going to get stolen nobody is going to refer to me as the author if they are going to learn from me. So, from that fear only the person is trying to restrict the knowledge. But if there is an ethical guideline, if there is an ethical code which guides like the developer, the creator should always be credited uh, with due recognition for the uh, products, the techniques that they have developed and it is like every person who was individually responsible for the design, invention, writing or other accomplishments should be credited for their contribution and while referring and we can tell like we can always use it with that reference acknowledgement and then maybe develop on that to bring further developments in those techniques. So, engineers using designs supplied by a client recognize that the designs remain the property of the client and may not be duplicated by the engineer for others without express permission. So, this is another of the ethical codes where the if you are using a design which is given by a particular client, we have to understand that the design remains the property of the client and you cannot duplicate it for others without getting permission from the client. So, engineers before undertaking work for others in connection with the, with which uh, like the engineer may make improvements, plans, the designs, inventions so or other records which may like bring to a question of copyrights or patents should enter into a positive agreement with the original copyright holder, original patent holder regarding ownership. So, this we have to understand. The engineers if develops any design, data, um, records etcetera which are referring to exclusively to an employer's work at the employer's property. So, sometimes why we are discussing this at length like sometimes we are confused about like can we claim for a copyright or it is is it our intellectual property or not. So, in this phase what we are discussing like that if the employer has paid for certain design and you have developed for it then the mm, copyright the patent for it rights mm, these intellectual property rights remains with the client the employer who has asked you, who has supplied you the design for it. So, if that particular engineer is going to work for um, others, so then before and if that person is going to do some uh, development on it, so they have to seek the permission of the client. So, also for a before like I end it undertake any project and I you have to come into a particular agreement with the client regarding positive agreement regarding which part of the design is the client's property 
and the, what are the nature of developments that you have made and how much improvement you have made, what new like perspective that you have given to it. So, should that remain as the um, employer's property or you can like uh, claim as that as your ownership and you can claim that part of the improvement as your um, own property. So, these type of positive agreements needs to be done between the um, engineers and for the clients for whom they start working. So, whatever the engineer is um, design which the may be done which is like referring if the engineer is developing any design data records and notes which is referring exclusively to the employer's work then uh, these are the employer's uh, property. So, because it is related to the employer's work, but if it is some fundamental changes in the design the person is making, some fundamental changes in the in our, our inventions or um, is making or using other records and other things. So, you need to like clarify these facts before you start entering into work with others like which part which part of the design that I am doing like which which are the design which is exclusively done for the employers and like if based on that I mean, maybe I am bringing in more referring to more data more sources and then I am trying to redesign, replan, develop something on of my own. So, should that also be the employer's property, intellectual property or the engineer can claim an ownership for that. Regarding that before entering into the work, they should come into a positive agreement with the person whom they would be working with. Now, we will discuss the key question 2. So, like why are some creations accorded copyright protection? Under what, if any circumstances, is it fair to copy a copyrighted work without explicit permission? So, this question itself may sound like contradictory, like, like you in the first part, maybe we are arguing, we are trying to ask, like, what are the some creations which can be given a copyright protection and we are also trying to discuss here some special conditions where we find it is fair to copy a copyrighted work without even asking for explicit permission. We will try to answer this question uh, with a reflective thought process. So, what is copyright is copyright is the legal right to exclusive publication production, sale or distribution of some work. It is the right for exclusive publication, production, sale or distribution of some work. So, the what we find copyright is uh, f most commonly held by authors, composers or publisher of a work. It the copyright may be transferred, it may be inherited or it may be transferred. It may be inherited or it may be transferred. However, so what happens when that copyright is inherited or it is transferred? It may not always be like the copyright holder is the person who has the credit for authoring the work. Like suppose a movie is made on some uh, work, uh, literary work and then what happens? The movie maker, the, uh, the producer has to buy the copyright from the original uh, author, the um, writer, the playwright, whoever it is. So, and then the copyright like 
passes on to the uh, producer of the movie. That does not mean the producer of the movie has himself or herself authored the storyline, authored the uh, story base on which this movie is going to be made. So, the if you are a copyright holder does not mean like you also have the credit for authoring the work. The copyright like if the original author dies, then what happens? The copyright is inherited by the um, his members who are there in the family and then if in this case the movie make uh, producer wants to make a movie and the original author is dead, then the they have to ask for the uh, family members for the uh, like transfer of the copyright. So, copyrights can be inherited like in this case the family members have inherited the copyright from the original author and it can be transferred also. So, the intellectual part of the intellectual property which is trans like which is protected by the copyright over here is the expression of the idea, not the idea itself. The ideas cannot be copyrighted. Uh, the idea being which is there for the fair use of the copyrighted material is that it somebody using the copyrighted material may be justified if it does not undermine a copyright holders um, property interest first or it is in the interest of greater public. So, what we find in the may be given in at the end of the many books like it can be reproduced with permission or um, it can be reproduced in cases without permission also only for the purpose of education, but not making like um, because it facilitates education for the greater public interest, but cannot be used for by the person uh, for the other person for own um, benefits monetary benefits. So, if a part of the copyrighted material, so it also like um, comes to question can we reproduce the entire part entire thing together uh, together or there are certain parts which we can reproduce which is like so that it does not undermine the copyright holders property interest. So, if you are just going to copy the photocopy the whole book and you are going to sell it in a lower price maybe it is going to like have an effect on the copyright holders property interest. But if like some pages you photocopy and then you are like using it for your education purpose, class teaching purposes, maybe it, it is not like putting a negative effect on the copyright holders property interest and it is used in the public interest also. So, in that cases it is like a fair use of the copyrighted material and you can like somewhat to some extent copy of the copyrighted material, but a question mark again is to what is the upper limit to it. So, what a what what of the, what is that portion that you may copy that you may reproduce which is not violating the copyright and because it is not like harming the copyright and the property of the property right of the person and you can use it for public interest also. So, this talks of a sense of balance, this talks of some guidelines given also, so that we can understand what, what is the upper threshold beyond which if we do we are beyond which if you are copying definitely. So, we are violating the copyright. In the next key question we will be taking up like how does one know what knowledge or information is proprietary and how 
what considerations are relevant in deciding how a computer professional um, keep based confidential information in the proprietary knowledge of the client and employer and we are going to take up more two interesting key questions in the next module. Till then, thank you.